All right, in this video, we're going to look at a classic double pulley problem. And we're going to derive a key relationship that's worth remembering. So it says a small pulley in the diagram to the right has a radius of three centimeters. Let's label that right away. Okay, it's rotating at 120 revolutions per minute. It has, it's connected by a belt to the larger pulley that has a radius of eight centimeters. So we label that. And we're not given the revolutions per minute of the larger one. That's probably a question we're gonna have to answer. All right, so it says, find the angular speed of the small pulley in radians per second. So angular speed has units, radians per second. So it's theta, it's a, the, you know, you can get it set by beginning with the fraction that will relate to what you want. So I'm gonna, you know, indicate we want ra uh, theta radians per, and we want this to be seconds. All right, so, so how do we start? Let's start with the one fact that we know, right? We know that this small pulley rotates 120 revolutions every minute. So we need minutes to become seconds. And so we do that by timesing by one minute every 60 seconds. Remember by doing that, you're just timesing by the number one because one minute equals 60 seconds. So you're not changing values, just what it looks like. And uh, right now we've got our answer is revolutions per second. That's not what we want. We want radians per second. But one revolution in any circle is going to become uh, is going to amount to a rotation of two pi radians. So one revolution is equal to two pi radians in any circle. And now we've got our units. So revolutions cancels here. And I've got my units, radians per second. We can cancel here. That becomes a two. Two times two pi is four pi radians per second. And that's our answer. All right, let's, um, let's move on. It says find the linear speed of the rim of the small pulley. So linear speed, again, you want to think of the idea of, you know, imagine you're like, I don't know, you put a sticker or you, or you put like some kind of like piece of tape or something on this pulley. Um, it's going to be traveling around this pulley system at a constant speed. And no matter where it is in the diagram, that linear speed is the same. Okay, so that'll come into play later when I do one of these other problems. But um, linear speed is, um, so I'm going to kind of show you two ways you can think about this. One is using um, just kind of basic reasoning, right? So the linear speed is indicated with a V. And um, let's start with the fact that we know the rotational speed of the smaller pulley is 4 pi radians every second. Um, and I guess I should indicate I want this in centimeters. Let's say I want this in centimeters per second. Okay, I should really indicate the units. Okay, so 4 pi um, radians per second. We got to convert um, seconds. Well, seconds is good to go. We got to convert radians to centimeters. That's where we use the fact that 2 pi radians right, is one rotation, but one rotation in terms of um, uh, at like a linear distance is just, imagine unraveling the rim in one rotation. That's just its circumference, right? So two times pi times the circumference is six pi centimeters. Two pi radians will cause that rim to, un to basically wind out um, six pi centimeters worth of, of the belt. And we see that the radians cancel. 2 pi over, or 6 pi over 2 pi is 3, so I get 12 pi radians per, uh, sorry, not radians, centimeters per second. Okay. The other thing you could do is in, a, in another video, so that, you know, that's totally legitimate. Another way you could do that problem is you could note that the formula for vo linear velocity in these rotational and the linear motion problems is always the radius times theta over t. And of course, and we, we know the radius of the larger circle, or sorry, the smaller circle is three centimeters and theta over t, the rotational speed is four pi. I'll leave out units just because 
not to make it too clustered. And you see we get the same thing. Okay, so that's another legitimate way of doing it. How many revolutions per minute is the larger pulley turning? So here's where I want to bring up or kind of do a little digression and show you a, an important relationship in these problems that's very helpful, helpful in doing them. So again, notice we don't know, right? We don't know the, the revolutions per minute. So I was just going to like say X, you know, revolutions per minute. We don't know. We don't know how the rotational speed of this larger pulley um, in order to kind of keep up and to keep up with the um, the belt and, and cause this to the, cause it to be rotated the, the entire apparatus to be rotating at a constant speed. So I'm going to show you a little relationship that, uh, down here at the bottom, and we're going to use it. So it says assume the smaller circle rotates x revolutions per minute, and the larger circle rotates y revolutions per minute. Find a relationship between x and y involving the radii. So Again, it says that the smaller circle rotates x revolutions per minute. So I'm going to say x revolutions per minute over here. And the larger one, y revolutions per minute. Now the key to getting this relationship is that no matter where you are on this diagram, linear speeds are the same. Okay, so you're, you're, if you're right here where that pink dot is, your, your, your linear speed, no matter where you are in the diagram, is the same. So I want to get us set up by saying that the linear velocity, you know, whenever you're in like the large, whenever you're in the large pulley is equal to the linear velocity of the small. Okay, all, all I'm pointing out there is that your linear velocity is constant in the whole diagram. But your linear velocity... Um, while you're in the large pulley, we can convert its revolutions per minute, right? Y revolutions per minute converted to a linear velocity, we would have to times this by the fact that one revolution does a circumference, right? One revolution unwinds a circumference, and that's 2 times pi times b, okay? Whereas over here, Sorry. Whereas over here, x revolutions per minute converted to uh, a linear speed, it would be, well, there's one revolution uh, every 2 pi a centimeters. I guess I should have indicated units there. Um, it doesn't matter because they all cancel. Let's just say a is centimeters and b is also centimeters. Okay, it's not really going to matter because everything's going to cancel, but... Okay, again, I just equated linear velocities. Now watch. Um, revolution's gone, revolution's gone, revolution's gone, revolution's gone. Uh, thinking of this as an equation, the minutes are gone, the centimeters are gone. So here's our relationship. Let me just clean it up before. So I've got y times 2 pi times b is equal to x times 2 pi times a. And we see that the two pi's cancel. Those are gone. And so here we've got the equation we want. So I'm just going to write it as by equals um, ax. And let's just know what we have here because that will help us with the relationship. That is the radius of the large, right? That's the radius of the larger pulley. That's the rotational speed of the larger pulley. Right? And this, on the other hand, is the, right, that's the radius of the small. And this is the rotations per minute of the small. So we are going to use this fact up here in this problem. So that was our digression there. Good. So, so what do we see here? Well, so uh, B is the radius of the large. We know that that's 8, 8 centimeters. And uh, we don't know the revolutions per minute of the larger pulley, so that's Y. We know that the radius of the small is 3 centimeters. And the uh, rotation per minute is 120. Okay, and so dividing both sides of this by 8 
we'll get our answer. So y equals um, 3 times 120 is 360, and 360 divided by 8, I believe, is 45. So we get 45, and it's going to be revolutions per minute. Okay, now that makes sense, right? The, it makes sense that that's smaller than the, the it's, a, it's fewer uh, revolutions per minute than the larger one, uh, sorry, than the smaller one, because the smaller one's gonna have to rotate more frequently to keep up in order to, pr to produce the same linear speed. Okay, find the angular speed of the larger pulley system in radians per second. Let's start with uh, the fact that we know it's, it's, uh, you know, it's 45 revolutions per minute, so it's angular speed will be theta radians per second. Okay, we'll start with the fact that it does 45 revolutions every minute. We'll note that um, there are, uh, that one minute is 60 seconds. Now that takes care of the time. Uh, sorry, that takes care of the time. And next we need to turn revolutions into radians, but again, one revolution is two pi radians, and we get what we want. 45 times two pi uh, is, let's see, so 45 divided by 60 is equal to um, three fourths. So it's three fourths times two pi and that equals six pi over four, which is three pi over two radians per second. Okay, so we've, we've covered a lot. I'm kind of trying to cover as many of the types of questions as would come up in this one video. But fortunately, this last one's the easiest because it says, what's the linear speed of the rim of the large pulley? The key idea is that the linear speed is constant in this entire diagram. We already right that that was the that was the foundation of this relationship that we found here. So the the linear speed up here we found for the smaller rim is precisely the same for the larger rim, right? So this is exactly the same as for the smaller pulley. Okay, that's twelve pi, and uh, the units were centimeters per. I believe was it centimeters per second that we wanted? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so that's a good overview of this kind of classic double pulley problem. These show up in a, you know, a lot of math competition um, um, problems, and there, there are ways to make them kind of be really tricky at first. Um, so a relationship like this is, is worth deriving a few times and then just memorizing. Um, you don't need to do the problem that we did above with this relationship, but it just makes things so much easier. So, um, and it's pretty easy to remember because you're just multiplying the radii times the revolutions per minute. In any case, I hope this helps you and, um, and I will see you in a future video.